first of all, uh, thank you for joining me uh, on my presentation here on uh, new capabilities uh, track. Um, so today I would like to give you kind of an alternative view on the software architecture, um, so an alternative to uh, what we uh, know today. We'll talk uh, about leveraging um, um, in-memory uh, technologies uh, and also these new modular architectures as well as a um, web platform. Uh, so in the end, I would like to, uh, to, 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 to give you something new, some alternative that you can think about how this technology can be, uh, can be uh, leveraged. Um, so the topic is push again enterprise software to the next level, self-contained web applications on in-memory uh, platforms. Uh, I have actually three questions. Uh, first of all, have you ever heard about self-contained systems or self-contained applications? Uh, okay, there is a one person, that's good. Uh, so who used that approach in production? This is what I expected. Uh, okay, and now uh, some scary question. Uh, does any of you do some uh, front-end development uh, or, or did front-end development in the past? I know that's a scary question, but come on. Yeah, we all did. Uh, yeah, great. Um, but no worries, I will not talk uh, about front-end uh, development maybe just a little bit because it's important uh, it's important uh, piece here um, okay so uh, my name is uh, Michal Nosek I am a software engineer and sales engineer at star counter uh, star counter uh, is a Swedish company that is uh, building a future of uh, enterprise software uh, we are trying to transform the way how software is built how it's deployed uh, and how it's uh, sold and we do all this leveraging in-memory technology. That, uh, that's uh, why I'm actually uh, here. Uh, so you can uh, read more about Star Counter itself because this presentation is not only about Star Counter. I will show some examples on Star Counter. Uh, you can find more information on starcounter.com and also starcounter.io, which is focused more on developers. You can find me on Twitter, GitHub, uh, LinkedIn, of course. And if you have uh, any questions or you would like to discuss something, just hit me on, on, on email. I am, I am happy to contact you. Uh, so what's uh, on today's agenda? Uh, first of all, I would like to set the uh, stage and have a quick look on the enterprise software architectures um, of today. Mm, then I'm going to uh, introduce uh, three kind of ingredients that we are going to mix today. To, 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 to leverage this new architecture. Uh, first is uh, RAM uh, memory um, and in-memory databases. Then it's a uh, very briefly modern web platform and web technologies. Uh, and last but not least, uh, it's self-contained system architecture uh, in general um, and, and, and how it looks like. After that, I'm going to introduce uh, Star Counter, so a platform that is utilizing all of these uh, three uh, three pieces um, of technology. I would uh, like to talk a bit about its architecture, how the single, uh, very simple, self-contained application looks like. Uh, I will talk a little bit about um, integration challenges and integration tool, how we integrate these applications. Um, some small uh, demo with uh, simple uh, code also is included, and then how we look uh, into, the, into the future, how it can evolve. Um, uh, in the future uh, from the software and hardware perspective um, as well. So when building a big system, um, a bigger application, a portal or something to support your business case that has a user interface, you first have to decide how many things you want to build. In the past, it often happened to be one thing, the often criticized monolith that we really don't like. It's common understanding now that monoliths cause trouble and should be really um, avoided at all costs. Some of the problems that are seen are that they are uh, complicated, builds are very long, maintainability is bad, uh, it locks us into specific, very specific technologies, it's very hard to change something, um, and also um, there is longer time to market uh, and, and very, very limited agility. So currently, 
microservices are of course uh, talk of the talk of the town but also microservices they don't come without the cost well if you really have microservices uh, doing uh, one thing so as some people say implemented in approximately 100 lines of code you will have a lot of them and you have to deal with things like network traffic resilience um, and more complex implementations compared to just calling methods monitoring coordination all this uh, has to be handled that's uh, mm, that's uh, hard uh, also uh, I very like this uh, computing adage uh, which is called Weir's law uh, and it states that software in general is getting slower more rapidly than hardware becomes faster uh, and I think we can all agree on that so it was named by Niklaus Weird in uh, identified in 1995 in his paper uh, restated in 2009 uh, attributed to Larry Page founder of Google and also to many other people uh, but but we can see thanks to that that uh, interest uh, in that is high so uh, another forms that I like even more like is that what Intel give it Microsoft take it away or what Andy give us Bill take it uh, away so uh, these are the problems that we have to deal uh, with uh, today looking for faster hardware but I would also like to show you that we can provide simpler uh, software so First of the technology areas is uh, um, that I would like to introduce is a memory and in-memory uh, databases, and I would like to start with uh, prices of uh, one megabyte uh, of memory over time. Probably you're familiar with this uh, with this um, diagram. So over time, in general, memory is of course uh, getting cheaper, and it is related not only to hard drives but also to RAM memory, uh, and because of that it is possible um, and makes sense to use memory for other things that uh, than just uh, critical uh, for CPU operations so we can make databases utilizing that um, that uh, memory um, so we can get more RAM it also applies to uh, cloud services where we can get a bigger and bigger and bigger machine with terabytes already on the single virtual machine in Azure and also for uh, AWS uh, and these machines are uh, also getting cheaper uh, but uh, this process mm, of of, uh, of prices that are falling down is not that clear uh, anymore because uh, different reports and statistics actually show that like in uh, 2017 or 2018 already prices of RAM memory raised uh, a couple percent like two or three percent depending on the report so it is also possible that we are kind of hitting a wall uh, with, with, with the current technology and prices of this technology. Um, of course, we can be sh cannot be sure about that, but, but this is what, uh, what we can observe at least right now. So how RAM memory affected uh, in memory databases and what RAM means for the databases? Well, we already have in memory databases that are kind of legacy of course so we are switching from uh, conventional um, conventional um, approach uh, in the databases where everything is stored on the disk and we use RAM memory uh, for some indexes and some caching to optimize uh, reads but we already learned that it's uh, highly inefficient and it does not work very well it is limiting uh, under uh, current requirements uh, for fast data low latency mm, um, mm, and, and, and things like that so we built uh, in memory databases uh, there are in memory databases available um, where actually what happened what happened is that uh, mm, disk uh, has been partially replaced um, by fast RAM memory uh, so this gives a higher performance uh, on the database uh, by the way we are still to get durability capped by disk because we need to write uh, write uh, transactions to some uh, to some persistent uh, storage, mm, so it's also suboptimal. But what's the worst thing here is this communication between the applications and the database, because it doesn't really matter um, on some level how fast uh, um, is uh, is this database if we are limited by 
um, speed of light and communication with the database. Of course, it can be um, networking, very fast networking, but still it takes milliseconds. Um, it can be some IPC communication um, as well, but still we have to transfer data. We have to serialize, deserialize, move the data from the database to the application. We need more memory. This is just um, suboptimal uh, sub uh, approach to it. So to come up about RAM memory and memory databases, uh, so RAM memory is getting faster. Uh, it's better utilized uh, by modern CPUs, so we can get more and more per single CPU. But communication within memory database databases isn't faster. Also, RAM memory is not durable uh, yet, at least. There are some approaches for that. Uh, like with Intel's uh, 3D X point, but uh, I will be back to that uh, a little bit later. Also, we're not sure if this memory is getting cheaper uh, anymore, so we should look for some more efficient usage of that. Uh, next thing uh, I would like to, uh, to discuss very briefly, because I know that you don't like uh, front-end development, uh, me neither, actually. Uh, so it's a modern web uh, platform and web standards that we have uh, nowadays. So there are like three uh, most important uh, parts uh, for me in this talk. Like first talk, uh, first uh, thing is a standard called Shadow DOM. Uh, if you heard about it, so it basically allows to uh, combine different DOM trees in the browsers separately and provide some uh, encapsulation. Um, which is which is very new standard. Um, another thing is uh, custom elements. So uh, it is possible to build uh, pieces of the interface uh, and encapsulate them in HTML tags to reuse uh, in the different different applications. Uh, and also web sockets that are uh, very often already used, uh, and they are much more lightweight than HTTP. Um, and pulling everything is possible to push the data to the browser, making the applications uh, more real-time and more, uh, more reactive. So what about our web technology mm, today? Well, it's uh, possible to run it everywhere, um, basically. Um, development processes are all the same um, to, all, mm, to all cases. It's easy to get a nice look and feel and where organized which content using web platform, so there is a good balance between semantics and and uh, presentations, uh, which is not that easy with native platforms. Um, well, if, if, we if we want nice look and feel, maybe we can use some game engines, uh, but this is, uh, this is uh, not very optimal way uh, to do that. Uh, CSS and HTML is very good at it, and it does uh, its job. Um, currently, in the web, we can observe that modularity uh, is a priority, so, for instance, it's easy to load different elements from different sources to the browser, but it's still uh, not, uh, not that good because we still have some global scope. So it's hard to load different, uh, different libraries in different, um, in different versions, uh, for instance. Um, and web does not work in the exactly the same way everywhere. I mean, probably you can get even like rich with the web browser, but you should not expect that it's the newest from browser there, uh, so, so it's a problem with compati compatibility, um, but it's possible to deal with that uh, as well. And web is by default online. Of course, you can do some caching, but uh, but uh, caching means usually troubles. Uh, also, also on the on the client side. So, I think that the most important part here uh, is self-contained system um, architecture. Uh, this architecture is uh, mm, quite a new concept in enterprise software, and I wouldn't say that it's very popular. Uh, at least you can confirm that here. Um, so uh, this is not something that, that we developed. Um, this is described and promoted by people like uh, Stefan uh, Tilkov uh, from the company called InnoQ. It's a German company. Um, and you can find some first mention in, I think, uh, 2013. Uh, as far as far as I know, so um, if you would like to read like all details about this architecture and this approach uh, or description, um, you should go to uh, to the to the website stsarchitecture.org, uh, which is here. 
you you will have uh, more deep insights into that that uh, that architecture. Um, but today I would like to quickly show you what this architecture is is all about, and then how we interpret that uh, on Star Counter in memory application platform, so you can build systems uh, uh, according to this architecture, at least to some extent. Uh, okay, so. If you look at the monolith in the software as a monolith, uh, it contains uh, numerous things inside of a single system. User interface, different domains, uh, persistence, um, uh, business logic, uh, modules, components, frameworks, different libraries. It's really, really complex. With all these layers in one place, a monolith tends to grow. Uh, so some people figure out that it's uh, good to build microservices instead of that, uh, uh, which, of which are all obviously good. But there is also another approach, like instead of slicing these systems uh, horizontally, um, we can slice them vertically. So if you cut a monolith system along its every domain um, and wrap these domains um, into replaceable uh, full stack web applications, then such system, such application can be referred to as a self-contained uh, system, SCS. Uh, so this is the architecture I would like to be focused at uh, today. So what are, um, what describes self-contained systems and, and what are like rules uh, for self-contained uh, application. So every self-contained system is a separate web application, uh, which means that it has to deal with uh, storage and persistence, durability. It has to deal uh, with uh, business logic, with the application logic, um, and also it should have uh, its own user interface. So uh, it's a full application from the bottom, uh, from the bottom uh, to the top. Um, also, self-contained systems should not rely directly on other self-contained systems. So it should be able to do something uh, and deliver some value uh, on its own. Usually it's um, owned by one team. Uh, so uh, because it's rather small application, it's possible to deal with that uh, inside uh, one team, similar as with the microservices. Um, Communication uh, between the self-contained systems should, shouldn't be in general uh, synchronous, uh, at least uh, in its own request response cycle. Um, regarding the APIs that such application can expose, of course, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it has to expose service APIs, for instance, uh, to some native, uh, native mobile applications or some other systems. Um, it must include data and business logic because these two things are required to do actually anything, uh, anything uh, meaningful. It is not required for such application to have uh, user interface uh, because, of course, there are applications that are um, doing something really, really uh, right uh, without uh, without having any user interface. So it's optional. Um, every application should have uh, its uh, own user interface. It should not share the, this user interface or load this user interface from other applications. Um, and also business code, um, business logic code shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be uh, shared. Uh, well, the, the same thing about, uh, about um, integration applies to shared, uh, shared infrastructure. So uh, shared infrastructure um, uh, as self-contained system architecture uh, states should be rather minimized. But in some cases, if they're like valid, is a good compromise to share some infrastructure. It's the same situation as with uh, microservices uh, in general. If we think about uh, such self-contained applications and uh, and how they uh, integrate integrate um, with each other, uh, well, it's basically on the user interface level um, to minimize uh, coupling. So you have some uh, redirections or some uh, hyperlinks. Um, that can be used to navigate uh, between these two systems. Uh, but actually, I feel like this is not optimal way. Actually, it creates, uh, creates um, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, problems. It's not easy to deliver a system that looks uh, really the same between all of these applications. 
uh, even though we use the same libraries. Uh, so uh, the, the, the integration, uh, in my opinion, is that the integration in this architecture is the biggest challenge, uh, actually. Uh, so to sum up um, this architecture and how it's described, uh, it's good because of modularization. Um, it's easier to maintain uh, small, uh, small pieces of software. The coupling is quite loose, um, but we have a problem, so we trade off uh, the integration uh, and in many cases common look and feel and we have to deal with inconsistency uh, between this, uh, these two systems. It actually adds some, uh, some, complexity, uh, some complexity here uh, as well. So let me now introduce you what we built at Star Counter, which we call in memory application a platform, the platform that can be used for building systems according to self-contained uh, system principles uh, as well. Um, so um, we also try to uh, address here some of the issues with self-contained systems I mentioned. So this is not like one uh, by one, one to one in um, self-contained system architecture. It's rather interpretation uh, of uh, of what I uh, presented to you just a few slides, uh, few slides uh, before. So what is the general platform uh, architecture? Um, um, starting from the bottom. Uh, it uh, is uh, in-memory database that, of course, deals with persistence uh, and uh, writes uh, transaction logs uh, to the disk uh, for durability. Uh, it, uh, it supports queries um, and also includes uh, st some layer that we call data mapping that is requi uh, responsible for um, integrating applications on the data level. But we'll be back to that a bit later. Then we have um, application logic uh, with the view models um, that are deciding what is uh, visible um, uh, to the to the uh, client side, uh, where entities, database entities are um, are um, described um, and uh, where they are placed, uh, and application logic that operates on that data. Then we have a communication, um, basically over uh, web socket this is this is what we suggest and what we what we prefer because it is uh, super fast so we use a protocol called uh, json patch that is highly efficient and sends only deltas between the state of the view on the server side and on the client side with also operational uh, transformations to actually keep track of the changes um, and then there is a front end framework uh, whatever a framework you would actually uh, like to to use that actually is responsible only for uh, for uh, how the application uh, looks like for the presentation, not for the business logic on the on the client side. So it's simplified. Uh, so just to compare that approach and that software stack to traditional uh, stack, um, of course we have the database, but we don't really have in Star Counter uh, network shop between the application and the database. And there is also no object relational uh, mapper because these squares are communicating over shared memory. Uh, I will go into more details uh, later. Then there is only application logic that is also uh, simplified uh, because there is no, uh, no um, data access layer um, under, under that. Um, and we don't have to deal with, uh, with, with caching and, and, uh, and other problems that you, that you um, have to solve if you want to make your software uh, software fast. Instead of services and contracts for exposing like, for instance, REST APIs, we have the view models uh, that are keeping the state um, the state of the view on the server and validating also input from the, uh, from the user. So the only network connection that we uh, have here actually is the connection between the application and the database um, through the client side. Uh, so we remove one one uh, network layer uh, from the traditional stack. Also, it's very important to mention that the client um, in Star Counter self-contained system application is uh, is um, something that we call thin client instead of thick client. So, if we use REST APIs on the front end side, usually we also move some business logic and we duplicate this business logic um, uh, on the client side, which is bad for maintainability for changes. It makes software complex. We have the same business logic or part of this business logic both in the browser and on the server. Uh, so we don't like that. We call it um, we call it also glue code. Uh, so so uh, 
client is responsible only for showing what server uh, server uh, directory uh, serves. Let's uh, have a look into um, into data storage layer. In uh, we are talking right now about a single self-contained application that is running and built on the Star Counter platform. Uh, so. Uh, storage uh, in that application is fully ACID uh, compliant uh, according to uh, all rules. It provides uh, snapshot uh, isolation for all transactions that you do in the system between the applications as well. Um, it's fully uh, fully in memory, so all data resides in the memory, and uh, persistence is is provided by uh, by disk where we optimize um, writing the logs from the transactions and also. From the app developer perspective, um, this um, data store and, and way of dealing with data is very flexible because basically you can easily and efficiently store um, everything uh, that you can model uh, in uh, object-oriented language in Star Counter directory without doing any transformation. Uh, so that approach uh, where storage actually shares uh, the heap with uh, with application processes and and shares the uh, the memory uh, between the database process and different application uh, processes is called uh, VMDBMS. Uh, so mm, it's virtual machine database uh, management system. How we call it? So basically, it's possible to run um, application processes side by side with the with the uh, with the um, uh, database process um, and instead of copying. Uh, data, we uh, we basically have a one uh, shared uh, piece of the memory that is super super efficient because we don't have to transfer uh, transfer anything. Uh, business logic in such application um, is, as I already uh, told you, uh, rather simplified. Um, it's platform agnostic because it's possible to run Star Counter on a on a on a different uh, operating systems. Um, we mm, we develop it to be polyglot. Right now, we support uh, C sharp and have Node.js support uh, in uh, some um, first, let's say, alpha stages. But we want to develop more runtimes uh, to be able to run more code base. Um, and thanks to the architecture, um, it's it's uh, very real time. Um, yeah. So from per application perspective. If we talk about um, accessing data uh, in the database process, even if it's in memory, um, every time we, we want to get something from the database, it actually um, um, forces us to go through some object relational uh, mapper or some other transformation, then for the network or IPC, and then um, to the database memory. So we basically have the same data uh, inside the, the database and in the application. Uh, that is uh, suboptimal. Uh, from the Star Counter application perspective, you have only small kind of proxy object uh, that uh, have you, you can think about it as a pointer uh, to the database. Uh, so you can, if, if if you have a, an, an address of the object in the memory, that you can access it directly without copying that uh, to your applica application. User interface uh, in such uh, application is uh, web native. Uh, it communicates over web sockets. It's What's the most important thing here? It's uh, rather design agnostic. So if you don't like front-end development, it's a good thing for you because you just specify what functionalities you need, like day seekers, input fields, and the rest is provided by uh, design system um, that is on Star Counter platform. And then designer uh, actually is 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 styling the system after you run all safe all self-contained uh, systems uh, all together. Um, I would like to uh, show you um, quickly a few lines of code, uh, if you don't mind, how does this simple uh, self-contained system application look like in Star Counter? Just not, uh, not to just telling. It. Are you able to see what's here, more or less? Are you familiar with uh, C Sharp? Uh, I think uh, at least a little bit. I mean, it's not very, very different than than in Java, for instance. So it can be a big problem. But basically. Uh, here is the, 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 the fragment, the part of the application uh, where you can see how uh, the database persistent class is, uh, is uh, um, defined. So basically, it's uh, just a POCO class uh, with some attributes. So from the developer perspective, you just uh, build your business model and you mark some parts of this business, business model as uh, 
um, as a persistent fact, then if you create an instance of such object, it is already persisted in a database because it's created in the in the shared uh, in the shared memory. Uh, and you can use all the types uh, and and features uh, of the of the C sharp classes um, um, mm, that are in the language actually, because it's a uh, C sharp uh, ASP.NET Core actually uh, application. Uh, then we have uh, view model. So this part is is called JSON by example, where you kind of define what is visible and what can be changed uh, by the client uh, in the view model. Um, and the code behind uh, that uh, that JSON view model that actually um, deals with the business logic. So here we have small part that is uh, connected to the to the save uh, trigger on the web page, and it does the database transaction. Uh, so, so here we have a uh, database transaction scope where we can do database operations on our object. Uh, so every, every operation uh, on the database object has to be done uh, inside the transaction to provide uh, full ACID, uh, ACID uh, compliance. Uh, we have also some, uh, some SQL. Well, basically what it this code does, it is uh, updating um, either the name or the price of the product uh, from the form uh, that is uh, specified here without uh, the actual styling, uh, just just some simple form with the name and the price that can be that can be changed. This is actually a Polymer implementation, Polymer the library front end library from Google uh, mm, that that serves this simple application. And I have this uh, application here running in my virtual machine. Uh, so this is just. Uh, a simple self-contained system uh, where we have a uh, list of products and and uh, we can change the name or the price of the coke. I don't know what the currency is here. Uh, anyway, it, 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 it is stored already in the database with that simple simple code. So you can imagine more applications um, uh, running uh, side by side. Mm. Let me go back to my presentation here. Um, um, so. What's important uh, for self-contained systems is, is integration. So how we combine the systems, because um, if, if we want to build complex systems, then uh, out of small pieces, then we need to uh, deal with this uh, integration. So we have integration uh, for these applications on the two different levels. Uh, first level is, is, uh, is a data level. Um, so first of all, every single uh, self-contained uh, application that is running uh, on Star Counter, every single process, uh, can access the same piece of uh, of uh, shared and memory, so uh, so there is no need to 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 run some 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 copies um, of database processes or something like that. This is all directly from the same uh, piece of shared uh, uh, memory. Uh, it gives uh, different things because first of all it gives speed, as I already mentioned, um, but it also saves the memory that you need on the machine because. Uh, even if you run your database uh, process uh, and application process traditionally on a single machine that you have copies and more data you need to operate, you need this memory space to get this data from the database. In that case, this is not the case uh, here. But this is easy if we have um, systems with the same data model, dealing with the same data, but uh, the real um, sweet spot of star counter and what we really work on right now is to make it possible to integrate uh, different uh, different uh, applications uh, on the data level uh, effortlessly even though they are built completely completely uh, separately so different developers are building uh, applications for different domains different uh, dealing with the different things then you run uh, these applications together side by side and there is a feature in the platform, the layer called Mapper, that is able to find the, the relations between uh, between uh, between uh, these applications. So right now it's rather uh, semi-automatic, so you need to write some code, but the goal is to make it uh, fully automatic. So we are analyzing data models of the applications, we do machine learning on them, uh, and validating this model to actually, uh, actually uh, train uh, our system to be able to do that uh, automatically for the for the developers, at least to some uh, to some uh, extent. Uh, on the user interface level, as I mentioned, uh, integration 
uh, or actually lack of integration in health complaint system, uh, um, we feel it's uh, suboptimal. Um, so what we propose here is to actually, mm, is, is what we call client-side blending. So every application that is running the same system is ab able to contribute with its own part of interface to the single screen uh, in, the in the web browser. Um, so you can, you can have different applications that are showing uh, something, uh, something about the concept that, that you're actually looking for right now um, uh, in the user interface at the same time. So for the, sc for the end user, uh, traditionally, uh, self-contained applications are actually s separate applications because even if you have like uh, single page applications in self-contained systems, you need to navigate, you need to load everything separately. So you just um, uh, call some uh, get um, a through HTTP um, to get to get uh, to get um, your web page. Uh, so in self-contained systems, it's possible to have uh, single page applications. Uh, but it's not possible to have this, um, this, this sharing of a single application between the systems. With that approach, it is possible because you are not actually loading um, um, every, every application totally separately. And just to illustrate on some kind of simple uh, demo system, uh, here we have the uh, page of the application, some, some, um, some user, uh, user page uh, in some kind of um, CRM system, uh, let's say. And now we have one application running that contributes with the form um, and with the, uh, with the form for the contact uh, data and, and basic data of the user. If you run additional uh, uh, application uh, that is dealing with other domain with subscriptions because there is some, uh, it's some kind of back office system for the, for the drugstore, uh, let's say, it contributes with, uh, with uh, another part of the interface. Then we have some application that uh, deals with the timeline, so it gets all the events in the different applications here and show them on the timeline. Uh, now we have three applications, and then we add some small application that is able to handle user uh, user images. Uh, so we have image of the user um, that that we are on the page of, but we also contribute with these images um, in the small uh, small parts of interfaces of other applications uh, at the same time. Mm. So, what it uh, what it uh, actually uh, gives us, um, as I see it from the from the self-contained systems uh, perspective, we still keep modularization, we keep maintainability, we keep quite a loose coupling, uh, uh, but coupling is for sure a bit um, a bit um, less loose, <laughs> so to say. It's not that loose um, anymore. Uh, but instead of that, we have full and easy integration on both data level and uh, interface uh, level. We get the common look and feel because it's not the developer that defines the how the application uh, looks like in the end. And we have consistency because we can even share transactions between a different different uh, um, applications. Uh, so we remove integration uh, problem, uh, different look and feel problem, inconsistency problem. We introduce. Uh, some kind of another problem, which is kind of platform lock-in, of course. Uh, so if you run everything on the one platform, that you're locked into that platform. Uh, but the good thing is that um, um, as we support more and more uh, languages, you will be able to develop your applications not only in C sharp, not only in Node.js, but let's say in Java and Python and and uh, also more in the future. So you are locked into the platform, but maybe not to the programming language, which is some kind of compromise, at least uh, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so to do all of this and do this automated integration, we uh, actually compromise uh, uh, and we, we trade off um, uh, horizontal scalability. So it's not possible to scale out with that approach, at least now. Yeah, I mean, of course, there are like use cases where you can expect doing web scale, and you cannot serve that this way. Uh, but there are like many, many use cases where people are actually uh, introducing things that are designed for a petabyte scale, where they have like 40 gigabytes of data um, over time. Um, so, well, so this is what you actually trade for the simplicity uh, and, and being able to deliver system faster uh, and, and um, run different application from different sources as a one system. Uh, it's hard to me for me to say 
because we're on a very early stage, it's it's hard for me to say um, how it will evolve, but we see more and more hardware that actually is also able uh, to deal with uh, with a um, uh, big amount of data, with, with with terabytes of data on a single machine. So, uh, and also like a lot of multi-core uh, machines. Uh, but, but regarding scaling out right now, uh, it's not possible and uh, I'm not able to say how it would, yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 it's a very valid point. So what we also mm, sometimes uh, do is like that um, uh, we keep transactional data and operational data, like hot data in the memory database, and then we develop some kind of, you know, offloading or synchronization with some data warehouse, for instance, then you can deal with historical data. That's 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 the basically a way to go here as well. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I think we still have uh, a little bit uh, of time. Um, just would like to show some real project. Uh, so it's a project uh, built by one of our uh, customers. Uh, just a few developers. It's a quite big system uh, from the perspective of number of application because it contains. Uh, 20 uh, or more than 20 self-contained uh, conta contained systems on, on Star Hunter platform uh, and this number is growing so this system is responsible uh, for actually optimizing the process of manufacturing uh, modularized uh, products uh, in general so you have uh, different different modules and you create different products um, uh, you would like to see what's the optimal process for that uh, so this is one example. Another example are like in, in retail. So uh, the largest uh, retail store um, in uh, in Sweden, uh, actually, that is, uh, I think, four times bigger than the largest wa Walmart, for instance, runs uh, one uh, or actually two because for failover, a four core machines on Star Counter to deal with 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 their cash registers and and the uh, the financial data and and uh, preparing report uh, close to be real time. Uh, it's uh, also important to mention performance because today I was uh, I was actually focused uh, on the on the on the architecture, but uh, thanks to this architecture, performance is is really really uh, good. So we did some benchmarks. We of course have uh, much more um, with some kind of full stack application uh, benchmark where we move money between accounts. Uh, it's like five percent uh, right and read totals of the different accounts. Is 95 uh, uh, percent. These operations were uh, mixed randomly. Uh, it was like previous version of Star Counter and running uh, ASP.NET uh, .NET application on a EC2 large instance, and we got to one million operations uh, per second. Uh, we did uh, a comparison with MariaDB and Node.js with some cluster, uh, and the numbers are. Uh, really, really, really uh, lower. Of course, probably it's possible to optimize MariaDB more. We are not expert in that, but this shows kind of the difference between uh, this approach and, and more traditional approach um, um, in the same uh, kind of uh, business business uh, applications. Uh, workloads like uh, YCSB with 5% uh, writes and 95% reads uh, also uh, show some ni nice numbers, uh, especially uh, scalability um, uh, with the cores. So um, reads uh, scale pretty much linearly if you add more uh, cores because everything is fed from the memory. Of course, uh, regarding regarding uh, writes, it's not that good because we are at some point always capped by uh, by disk, uh, and and we have to rely rely on that. If you turn off durability or you don't wait for transactions to be flushed to lock on the disk then it's of course uh, it's of course um, better so just a little bit quickly about the future uh, and uh, and uh, what we believe into because I think we are almost out of time um, we believe that non volatile RAM memory non volatile uh, RAM uh, sticks um, is the future it will serve some um, it will be able to get more data for a lower, a lower price on a single machine. So um, it will actually follow the, mm, the way how, how the data grows even with the in the operational data on the single machine. So we will be able to apply that. Um, and actually to, uh, to, to, to apply that in a, in a very uh, optimal way, we already work on this. Um, so um, we are um, introducing some, uh, some uh, 
uh, HTAP uh, storage that will replace current, current storage and it will uh, better utilize uh, modern multi-core CPUs with, uh, with uh, NUMA architectures uh, and also uh, volatile VRAM uh, for, uh, for Delta store and non-volatile VRAM for some uh, main store and it is going to be uh, columnar so also um, it gives like for instance in SAP HANA uh, columnar stores are much better optimized to compress the data and reduce memory footprint uh, footprint uh, as well um, so to wrap up um, we believe and I believe that uh, enterprise software of, of tomorrow is it, it should be and is going to be simplified of course thanks to different in memory technologies uh, um, is going to be near real time probably never will be real time uh, as some people say um, uh, it will be easier to maintain with uh, different architectures that are evolving uh, it will be reusable so uh, we believe that it should be possible to take different applications from different people different developers different businesses and easily plug them in uh, to serve some uh, serious thing in in your systems just to not reinvent the wheel every time we need some functionality that is already uh, developed it will be or it already is uh, fully web-based uh, because web is everywhere and it will deal with uh, fast data uh, with low latency and uh, and be probably HTAP or HL app or hope, hope uh, depending which uh, analytics firm you choose. Thank you.